The title of the message this morning is You Will Survive the Storm. It is found in Matthew 14, 23 through 33. This is the message that comes from the Word of God this morning. As soon as the meal was finished, he insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late into the night. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to the sea when the wind came up against them and they were battered by the waves. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. They were scared to death. A ghost, they said, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter, suddenly bold, said, Master, if it is really you, call me to come to you on the water. He said, Come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves, churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. And he said, Faint heart, what's got into you? The two of them climbed into the boat. And the wind died down, the disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshiped Jesus, saying, This is it. You are the God's son for sure. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for who you are and all that you give us. Father, we ask, Lord, that this morning, God, who is ever watching this sermon, wherever they are, that your Holy Spirit would enter that room where they are, we ask, God, that you would minister to their hearts who they are and all the things that they have need of. Help us to understand that the storms that, that come around us, they are not foreign to you. You have it all under control. We ask these things in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. So this morning, the title again, the title of the sermon is, You Will Survive the Storm. Now, I think we all know and we all recognize that we have all recently been through a storm. We have walked through a time in our lives, in the last 18 months of our lives, that has just really kind of thrown everybody in so many ways. And there may have seemed like times that we would never, ever come out of the storm. There were probably moments where people were lonely and they were tired. How many know that when you are weary, that doesn't mean you are necessarily weak? We can still find hope. So there's several points that I want to look at this morning. Number one, surviving that storm. That's not just a play on words. There are things in our lives that are well beyond our control. There are things we don't have any control over. We can't control what's happening around the world this morning. We can pray. We know that the God of heaven can come into that situation, but we can't always control the situation. For some of us, that's a tough place to be because by natural inclination, we love to control. That's, that's just a normal part of our human nature sometimes. I know it is for me. I want to control. I want to control the situation. But sometimes things are well beyond my capabilities. Sometimes, in the midst of wanting to control, we create an additional storm. How many know that we oftentimes can create additional problems that we never needed to get there in the first place. You know, for some people during this pandemic, they might have felt alone. And so maybe they developed relationships that necessarily were not always healthy because in reality, they were creating a, a new storm for their lives, a storm that may not end well. And that doesn't mean that God is not in control and that he cannot find a way because, again, God knows all situations. Number two is God's timing is designed to teach you to trust. You know, sometimes we walk through things and, man, we don't like having to trust God. I think if we're honest and we're truthful, we say, you know what, I can't trust God in that. Now, we don't want to say that, especially in front of church people. You know, we've got to have our, our realm of Christianity around us. But the truth about Christianity, if we're truly honest and we're truly raw about it, is, you know, we really don't have any control over it anyway. God is trying to teach all of us through the midst of our situation to trust him. 
Jesus is the one who sent them into the storm. If you look back at the scripture, it says he's the one that pushed them out and said, go. Sometimes we are really quick to say, well, the devil made me do it. The devil is his fault. Sometimes it's us. And we give a lot of credit to the devil when it's not the devil at all. Psalms 37, 23 says, our steps are ordered by God. And yes, God accounts for those detours. Sometimes we miss it. I've missed it. We've all missed it at some point. We have all taken steps. And we think, how is God going to fix that? Well, he's an all-knowing God. He's already accounted for it. He's already walked through that season. Sometimes we run from God's timing because it's uncomfortable. It seems foreign. Sometimes we go to those really familiar places that while we may not necessarily like those places, they're comfortable. They're safe because we know the surroundings around us. We know those things. Now, what's really interesting about this is it said that Jesus went up to the high mountain and he could see. God, even when it doesn't look like he's present, is still right in the midst. He's still seeing everything that goes on. You think you're invisible to God, but he's in the midst of the storm, even when you cannot see him. So it says that Jesus went up in verse 24. He climbed the mountain to pray, and he was up very high. It also records that it was during the fourth watch, so that's around 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., times of uncertainty in the night season. How many of us know that when we're plagued with something on our minds and we're plagued with something in our hearts, it usually comes at us in the, what we would consider the, the really strangest times of the night season. I had a spiritual mom years ago that told me, do not make decisions when you're tired and in that season of the night. Because your mind isn't full of clarity. You've not rested. And a lot of times, that thing that plagues our mind are the things, is the things that we, you know, are dealing with in the early mornings of the hour. So I find it interesting that, you know, the storms that they were dealing with, it came up during the fourth wash, the 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Again, remember, our steps are, are appointed by God, stepping out of those familiar places. Let's talk about that for a second. Sometimes for some of us, you know, we have lived with rejection. We have, we have lived with anger. We have lived with fear. We have lived with all these uncertainties. And, you know, God is wanting to take us from one place to the other. And yet we're comfortable staying where we are, even if we don't like it. Well, I've always been angry. My daddy was angry. My mama was angry. My grandma was angry. Everybody was angry. So you know what? I'm going to be angry. Yeah, you just don't understand. That's my heritage. That's the way it is. I'm angry. It's the way I was. My color, my hair. Or if I have no hair. It's that thing. Well, you know, my mama was depressed. My daddy was depressed. So I guess I have to live depression. I don't want to give the illusion that being depressed is, is of the devil because the reality is, is a lot of people face depression. There were people, countless people in the Word of God who loved Jesus, who loved God, who dealt with their level of struggle, who dealt with that. But sometimes we find comfort in staying what we know, in staying where it's close. It says in verse 26, they saw what, happened, what appeared to them to be a ghost and they freaked out. Sometimes when God shows up, we're looking for God to just, man, he's here, he's on the scene, God's going to get rid of it, and, you know, Goliath is just going to go away. God did not slay Goliath. He made David walk through it. He made him walk through it. When God shows up, we think, well, God's here. Everything should immediately be made right. But how many of us know that during the times when God shows up, he doesn't always remove the mountain. He doesn't prevent the storm. He doesn't just say, Goliath, slay Goliath. He walks us through those times. And once again, we circle back to that place of safety, that place of familiarity, the boats of our lives. 
the money in the bank account. We want great health. We want all of those abundant things that God says, because it says for sure that it says that I desire for you to prosper and to be in health. But sometimes we walk in fear. We remain in a place, a place of anger, fear, frustration, uncertainty. Again, even things we dislike, sometimes even the things we hate, the boat is still safer. And here was Peter once again said, it is I, Jesus said, it is I to Peter. Jesus being fully God and fully man. But it also records that Peter said, if, if. You know, we often think, oh, Peter was this great guy of faith, man. But even Peter said, if. Could we conclude that maybe Peter was having a, a doubtful moment? Is this really Jesus? Maybe the disciples were in the boat and they were going, you know, would this Jesus who loves us, who says, I love you, really send us into the storm? Surely, if he was all-knowing, he knew there was a storm coming. Peter said, if it is you, let me come. Now, here's the most amazing thing about this. Jesus did not give some great theological course at that moment. He didn't give some great pearl of wisdom. You know, sometimes we're looking for that sign. We're looking for that great, you know, slogan, that thing that's on the back of a church bumper sticker. We're looking for that sign. We're looking for that meme. We're looking for something. And Jesus just simply said, come. You know, it's almost the equivalent of what we do with our pets. We tell our animals to come. And sometimes they have more obedience than we do to God. Sometimes that happens. You know, many recount Peter's lack of faith. Boy, they're just on him. Boy, Peter, man, he jumped out of the boat. You know, Peter was that problem child. The one that got his, you know, self in a little bit of trouble by talking way too much. Peter was one of those guys. I think we've all been there, though. The ones that were talking about Peter were the ones that were staying in their familiar place. You know, it's a safe place. But Peter got out of his safe place. He said, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. And, you know, maybe the guys in the boat, they were already frustrated with Peter. They were already tired of him anyway. Yeah, you know, let me get away from, you know, I just want to get away from these guys. You know, they're all negative anyway. Peter was what some might call that problem child, but he jumped out there. When Peter jumped out and he started walking, and it doesn't record how long he walked. It just says he started walking. He got out. But then fear took over, as it does with all of us. He experienced the turbulence, the wind, the, the waves. They were crashing, and he began to sink. We have a choice to fear the wind or trust the word. If we're honest, this past year, the current situations, here we are as the church stepping back out, and then boom, the world seems to be on fire today. Gas shortages. Problems in Israel. We're still not completely over this pandemic, but here we are as the church stepping back out. The world seems to be living in fear. And we can either join in that course, or we can say, you know what? We choose to believe the word. So for our parents, our students, our families, it would seem that the Goliath is staring all of us in the face. It would seem as if you or I were facing Nebuchadnezzar, and we are the three Hebrew children, or we are Daniel towards the lion's den. Now I make no illusion. Daniel wasn't going, yay, I get to go and sit here with these lions that will probably rip me to shreds. I've often said Christianity is not the absence of my humanity. It is not leaving my humanity on the doorstep. I still have human emotions. I still deal with, uh, you know, times of weariness, times of frustration, and sometimes times of depression. Now, I know we're not really supposed to talk about that, right? Because we're in church. 
But when did church become the place for the perfect? When has it stopped being the place for broken people? Please keep in mind that God didn't keep Pharaoh out of Moses' life. He didn't prevent Goliath from being born. And lastly, go, to, go with me to the original start of the passage. It says, Jesus, you know the all-knowing Son of God, sent them into the boat, knowing there was a storm, knowing that Peter would lose faith, telling them, go to the other side, where they still had an appointment. They were still set to change the world. This is our challenge today. To stay in a safe place of safe familiarity and may not be the place we like, but it's the place of comfort. Or we can say, God, you know what? We're stepping out of the boat. We're going to look for a new day. We're going to look for a new place. We are stepping out of that thing that has been so familiar to all of us. As we have graduates going into what would appear on the surface to be an uncertain world. It's been a lot of uncertainty for the last 18 months of our lives. I'm sure people went into 2020 thinking, man, this is going to be a great year. It's a new decade. Or, or it's the beginning of a new decade for us. And then all of this happens. But maybe God is saying to us this morning, are you going to trust me for the favor that I desire to give you? Or... Are you going to stay in that safe place that has been so commonplace for you and I for so long that even though we hate it, we're more comfortable there? So will you survive the storm? You know, Jesus told them, I need you to go to the other side. What's on the other side this morning? What is the thing that God needs you to do? What is the thing that God is asking you to do? God didn't just stop the storm. There were many who probably said, where was God? He didn't prevent COVID. He didn't prevent the things that are happening. He didn't prevent Israel. I got news for you. God is taking care of Israel. He is taking care of it. God is still in control. This morning, God is asking you, are you trusting me? Are you ready just to stay in the boat because it's a safe place? Yes, the storm is, is raging around you, but I am in the midst of you. So what are you going to do with his time this morning? Who are you going to be? Who are you choosing to be? Are you going to be a person who trusts what you feel? Or are you going to be a person who trusts his word? Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this time this morning. Thank you for everyone who is watching. God, I pray, Lord, that they are challenged to get out of the place of familiarity and walk in the place of favor, knowing, God, that you want to give us your favor in everything you do, God. We give you thanks in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen.